That is right. Do you know, kids, Christmas, we, we read the story and we think, well, I know all about it. I know what happened. And maybe you've, you did. Very cool. You've got the star on your TV. That's awesome, Ava. Um, but, you know, we can, we can hear lots about Christmas. We can hear about the story. But really, at the time, it was really unexpected. They weren't expecting it at all. And I wanted to focus on three things that were given to Jesus, three little gifts that were given to him. Weren't that little, but they were very special. And I wanted to read to you first a scripture from the Bible where it says about the wise men. Now, we don't know if there was lots of wise men or if there was just three, but we know they bought three gifts. Does anyone know what the three gifts that the wise men brought? Can anyone remember it? Jude Lockins. Yeah, he was the very special gift. But can you remember, Jude, what the wise men brought? Ask Chrissy, he might help you. One of the things, you have a think. Karis? Oh, Jude got gold and myrrh. That's very good. There's one really tricky one that starts with a f. It's a long one. Josh? Frankincense. Very good. Well, up here I've got some things that represent gold. Look at this. It's not real gold, but it looks a bit like gold. And I've got this one. Frankincense. Frankincense was like a special incense, a special smell that people used to burn. Can anyone smell that? It's a special candle in there. It smells very nice. You can smell it after. Oh, Jude, quick, come. Quick, 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 quick. Quick. Can you smell it? You've got to smell really big. It's a nice smelling candle. And frankincense was like a special incense that they used to burn. Gold was very precious very precious. And this one, this represents myrrh. And myrrh was a special ointment that they used to give. And I want to talk to you about those three things, but first I want to read something from the Bible. It says, it says in Matthew that the star that the wise men had seen when it rose went ahead of them. It finally stopped over the place where the child was, talking about Jesus. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child, Jesus, with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. I love it that they said that. They bought treasures for Jesus. They opened their treasures and they gave him gold, frankincense and myrrh. The three things that you said, special treasures, special gifts. Do you know the gold that they gave him actually represented the fact that Jesus, this little baby that was so unexpected, was actually a king. He's actually the king of kings. And so they gave him gold to signify how special and how royal he was. They also gave him frankincense. I said that was a special thing that they burnt, a beautiful smell. And frankincense was something that they used to use as worship to God. Frankincense. And so giving him this was showing a special symbol to say that because of Jesus... We can worship God as our saviour because he has done everything to take away all of our wrongdoing and help us to know God. He came as our saviour to rescue us and bring us back to God. And this one, myrrh, this was actually used as something to prepare, it's a bit gross, but something to prepare dead bodies. Imagine giving a baby a gift of something to prepare a dead body. Because you know what? This gift showed us how Jesus would die. It was a gift to remind him and his family and just point the way to the fact that he would die for us. So we have gold. Jesus came as our king, the king of kings, but he came as a baby because God didn't want to just come in and come as a ruler riding on a horse. He wanted to come as a baby to show us that he knows what it feels like to be a human. And he came as our saviour, the one who could rescue us and bring us back to God. And he came, what would he do to do that? He would die on a cross for all of our wrong. And so did you know that? Those three gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh, 
were very special gifts given to Jesus and they had a very special meaning. And what I've asked three young people to do today is to come and pray, okay? Because we're going to pray to Jesus because the wise men brought their treasures to Jesus to worship him, gold, frankincense and myrrh. So can I have Mia come out the front and also Callan and Cody? And I asked these three young people to prepare a prayer around one of these three things that I've been talking about, the fact that Jesus is our king, that Jesus is our saviour, and Jesus is our friend. He came to die so that we could be friend with God and be his forever friend. He's our friend. All right? So we're going to all pray, kids, and these beautiful young people, me is in our youth, Callan's about to go into our youth, and <laughs> Cody's in our kids' church, and so we're going to get them to pray on behalf of all of us here. Our, the grown-ups are going to pray, the kids are going to pray, all right? And we're going to thank and worship Jesus for who he is. He's our king, for what he came to do to rescue us and bring us back to God, and for the fact that he died to do it he paid the ultimate price to do it for us all right why don't we pray you might want to put your hands together kids close your eyes grown-ups right across this place let's pray dear god thank you thank you jesus that you were born to be our king help remind us that christmas is not just about Sorry. gifts but it's about giving as you have given us the greatest gift of all help us spread your love and peace this christmas thank you jesus for coming to us as our saviour when you were born on Christmas Day. Thank you for showing us relentless love by choosing to lay down your life for us so we can be in heaven forever with you. Thank you for always being there for us and we know we can always count on you. Lastly, we thank you, Jesus, for the wonderful earth you created. We know it's way too precise and detailed for anything else to have made it exist. You made everything, including us, so we rejoice in it happily and praise you for what you have done. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus, because without him we would not have Christmas. I thank you for blessing us with a life and thank you for blessing us with a family and friends. I pray for all the people who are lonely and sad. I pray that you give them a happy Christmas. Lord, I pray that <clears throat> you will be with us during this festive season. And thank you, Lord, that you are my forever friend. Amen. Amen. What great prayers. Why don't we put our hands together for these amazing young people. You guys can take your seats. And we're going to hear a little bit more in a minute how we can make Jesus our forever friend. But isn't it great that even though you get all these amazing presents probably at Christmas time, we can remember how great a gift Jesus is and the fact that we can, you did, how we can worship him and give him gifts. So why don't you guys go back to your seats, all right? You did very good listening. Growing up, so why don't we put our hands together for our kids? Cool. And I'm going to hand back to Pastor Sam and the team. Absolutely stunning words. Emmanuel, God with us, O come. And so we're here today to celebrate Jesus, the fact that God in human form came to earth, God that we can see, God up close and personable, the visible image of the invisible God came to earth and people were not expecting it. People didn't see it coming at the time. You know, he didn't come as a religious guru. He didn't come as a king riding on a white horse, a victorious king. He didn't come as a political revolutionary. He came as a baby. A baby was so unexpected. <laughs> and in the book of John, the gospel of John, we read John chapter 1. Let's have a look at that first scripture, John chapter 1, 9 to 11. Thanks, guys. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The word was in the world. The one who spoke, let there be light that started that process and created this whole world that we see was coming into the world. The Word was in the world and the world was made through Him. That's amazing. Think the God who created the heavens and the earth came down, down, down. 
But the world did not recognize him. I mean, the wise men did. Because they were astrologers, they were looking to the stars, they knew the prophecies about Jesus. And this beautiful, bright, shining star appeared and grabbed their attention to say, it's true, follow this star to where this child is. It says he came to what was his own, the the Jewish people. You know, they had grown up with all these prophecies, all these things saying that Jesus was going to come, the Messiah was going to come, but he came in such an unexpected way that they didn't pick it. (laughs) But his own people did not accept him. Keep going. We'll just pause there. His own people did not accept him. It was so unexpected. This baby born in a dirty animal shed that his own people did not even expect him. But this light, this true light, the scripture says, was breaking into the world, breaking into the darkness of this world, breaking in to the mess of this world, as Pastor Sam shared last night, to actually bring us the hope that we can know God as our Heavenly Father, that we can have a personal relationship with Him because Jesus came to remove the barrier that separated us and God. You know, our sin, our wrongdoing, the punishment for that is eternal separation from God, but Jesus came in, the God of heaven. (laughs) I love that clip with the kids. It says the God of heaven actually sent the Prince of heaven to come sent his very best to come, to remove the barrier between us and God so we can have a personal relationship with a heavenly heavenly father. That's amazing that he did that. He took the punishment for all of our wrongdoing, all of our sin, and sin is actually independence from God, trying to live your life without God in it. (laughs) And he came and he took the punishment for all of our sin. You know, we see these gifts here. He was a king of kings, but he came because no one else could do it. No one else could remove the barrier between us and God. He came to take the punishment so that barrier could be removed between us and a holy God. He was the only one who could do it because he was the only one who was without sin, fully God, fully man. He came to understand what it was like for us, to suffer for us. To rescue us. That was his mission. This baby, this king of kings born, was born to die. That was his mission. And so we see myrrh as well. It was used for embalming bodies. Amazing. Let's look at this next scripture. It says in John 1, 14, The word became a human being. He made his home with us. I love that. He made his home with us. He came to be with us. We have seen his glory. It is the glory of the one and only who came from the Father. And the word was full of grace and truth. Truth about who God is and what he's like. Grace, undeserved favor. God's grace, God's undeserved favor. We didn't deserve (laughs) the gift of knowing God as our heavenly father. We deserved eternal separation from him. But God sent Jesus because he loves you so much. He loves me so much. He didn't want us to experience eternal separation from him. So he sent his son full of grace, full of undeserved favor, full of truth. So beautiful. And what I wanted to encourage us with this morning, the next scripture, guys, thank you, is this amazing truth. You know the grace shown by our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was rich, he became poor to help you. Because he became poor, you can become rich. We heard before about the wise men who opened their treasures to bring gifts to Jesus. Well, you know, God gave his treasure. He gave his very best treasure. He didn't hold back. He gave the Prince of Heaven, the treasure of heaven, to become poor, to suffer and die on our behalf, in our place. 
so that we could be adopted into God's family and become his kids, so that we could become spiritually rich. Because you can have all the money in the world. (laughs) You might be here and you think, you know what, I've tried all this different stuff. I've tried lots of things that the world offers. I've tried lots of things that people say are good and pleasurable for living, but I've come up empty. I've come up lacking in meaning. I've come up knowing that these things ultimately don't satisfy me. A relationship with God is what you were made for. A relationship with God and Jesus became poor so we could become spiritually rich, so we could actually be adopted into God's family and become one of his kids. That's astonishing. He gave his treasure for you. He gave his treasure for you. As you're receiving a gift this Christmas, (laughs) as you're giving a gift, be reminded that he gave his treasure for you. He gave his very best for you. He gave you himself. So that, let's look at the last scripture I want to share this morning. Because it says that people didn't recognize him. Jesus was unexpected. You know, he broke into the darkness of our world to show us how to and the way to, he is the way to know God as our heavenly father. He broke into this world. (laughs) But it says, I'll read just that passage and then the last little bit, verse 12, in with it. It says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him yet. But, and here's the hope bit, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God. To all who did receive him. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going on in your life right now. You might feel far from God. You might have once believed in God. You might be in a situation that feels very dark. (laughs) Kids and grown-up kids, you might have thought, Baby Jesus, but now you've heard today that baby came to die for you and you can see the love of God on display. To all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You know, God's gift to you this Christmas and every day is Jesus. It's his treasure, that's his gift to you. But we actually have to receive a gift. We can have those beautiful gifts sitting there going, wow, they look awesome. Don't they look beautiful? They're all wrapped up. But we actually have to, for a gift to be ours, we have to unwrap it. We have to receive it. And you can do that this morning. You can actually receive the greatest gift ever seen on the face of this earth. Because it's not a thing, it's a person. And the person's name is Jesus. He didn't stay dead. This baby that grew up to die for us didn't stay dead. He is actually, he is actually alive. He rose from the dead after three days. And it says, yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Not just to have the barrier removed between you and God. Not just to be forgiven of your sins. But to know God as your heavenly father. To know him personally. Not just here on this earth, but to know him for eternity. Because the Bible promises, and Jesus himself said that if we have him, we have eternal life. We have the promise of eternal life. And so the question for you this Christmas is, do you have Jesus? Have you received him personally? Have you received God's greatest gift? Have you received God's treasure? Because if you haven't, you can. (laughs) 
You don't have to make yourself good enough for God. You don't have to get yourself all sorted out before you come to him. You can just come and receive freely his gift to you. And we're going to have opportunity to do that right now. So kids and grown-up kids, we're going to pray right now. Right across this place. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, if you have never said yes to his gift of receiving him personally, it's a free gift. You can't earn it. Sometimes it's hard to wrap your head around it, but you can receive it. You can receive him this morning. And it's about opening up our hearts and our life to Jesus, saying, I believe you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose again for me. I believe you did it all so that I could know you, not just now, but for eternity. And I want to include anyone in a prayer who would like to receive him this morning. With all the heads bowed, all the kids, no one looking around. All the eyes closed. If you want me to include you in a prayer, if you actually want to pray to Jesus, I'm not going to embarrass you by making you come out the front. (laughs) But you can just simply look up at me as a way of indicating that's me. I want to receive Jesus today. Just look up at me and I'll include you in a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Kids, grown up kids. It's good. I know the Holy Spirit speaking to people. I can see there's some who are opening their eyes and looking at me. That's awesome. Well, let's pray. Church family, I want you to pray as well. Right now, if you've never received the free gift of knowing Jesus, of asking Him to come in your life, you can just pray this prayer. We're going to all pray it out loud. And if you mean it with all your heart, He will come in. And you'll become a child of God, a brand new Christian. So let's pray this together right now. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you came for me. Thank you that you died on a cross to take away my sin. Thank you that you're risen from the dead. And now I can come into your family. I receive you, Jesus. I believe upon you. I put my trust in you. And I thank you that I'm now a Christian. In Jesus' name, help me to follow you. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, like I know some of you did here today, You have just begun the greatest adventure ever. The greatest adventure ever. It's an adventure of having Jesus with you 24-7 because He's come to live inside of you. (laughs) He'll never leave you or forsake you. He's with you. And you get to spend forever in heaven with Him because you're now a child of God. And we would love to help you unpack what that means and how to actually follow Him. So you can talk to someone you came with. I'd love you to chat to me, Pastor Sam. Feel free to come and just have a conversation. What do I do now? What's next? Can we stand to our feet? We're going to sing a beautiful worship song. We're going to sing about the name of Jesus. We're going to sing about how wonderful and powerful and beautiful He is. How He did everything necessary to bring us to God. Come on, we're going to worship Him and thank Him this Christmas day. Thank Him for how good He is. Thank Him for how great He is. Thank Him that He's risen from the dead, that He loves us, that He came for us, that we can have a Christmas every day because we've got Jesus in our life. Why don't we sing this together right now?